Are you gonna bark, little doggy? Or are you gonna bite? What's up, everyone? Daniel Rodriguez here, aka Big D. It's time to review uh, one of the movies that I, I haven't seen since I was a kid, and I probably shouldn't have seen this movie when I was five years old. You know, I probably shouldn't have seen it, but I saw it. Uh, I rewatched it again. It's been a long time, and I finally understood it because I'm seven. I, I kind of know now what stuff means, and finally watching this movie, man. Uh, you could see from above, man, this movie, I, I found out I owned it, I, I bought it a long time ago, and I was like, oh, I own it, so <laughs> let me watch it. Uh, the cast itself, I'll get right to it, and uh, this is the first directorial, not directorial debut, because I found out he directed another movie before this, but this is his like, first major directorial debut to a, you know, big screen. Of course, we're talking about Quentin Tarantino, and I'm doing a Quentin Tarantino movie, you know, review thing now. I just saw Pulp Fiction, so that'll be a separate review, but, uh, you know, I'm gonna do Jackie Brown after that, Kill Bill, one, two, and, you know, so forth, leading up to The Hateful Eight in December. Uh, of course, Pulp Fiction will be coming right after this, so don't worry, you don't have to wait, like, monthly to watch mo my reviews for Quentin Tarantino, but this is his first big one. This was about a $1.2 million budget, I believe, and well done for that budget, man. Well, well, well done, so... Let's get right to it. Uh, the cast real quick, and here it is. Oh, I won't say it yet. Uh, first off, Michael Madsen. Yes, Steve, Bush uh, Steve Buscemi. Uh, Harvey, Cur Harvey Cattell. Uh, Tim Roth, man, I love Tim Roth, man. Very fantastic actor, holy hell. Uh, Quentin Tarantino himself, and uh, a few other actors, man. This is, of course, again, directed by Quentin Tarantino and written by Quentin Tarantino. Oh, a lot of Quentin Tarantinos here. Take a shot every time I say Quentin Tarantino. Anyway, Quentin Tarantino. So let's get right to it, guys. This is my... I'm going to do a non-spoiler review right now and then a spoiler review, but here it is, my non-spoiler review and spoiler review for Reservoir Dogs. Okay, let's get right to this. I just want to talk about this now. The non-spoiler review real quick. If you haven't seen the movie, go see the movie. Go rent it, go find it at your library. I didn't doubt it'll be in the library. <laughs> it's at my library. But go, literally, go freaking find this movie and rent it. Watch it. It's on Netflix, actually. I'm sorry. If you have Netflix, check this movie out. I, I don't want to spoil nothing for you. Now I'm going to get to my spoilers for those who have seen the movie and want to see what I thought about it. But if you haven't seen the movie, awesome directing, awesome acting, awesome freaking cast, and just the way the storytelling is and the way it ends. Ooh. Ooh. I'm not going to get into it right now. Not with a non-spoiler, so go see it. Now get out of here, scram. Now to the spoiler review. Let's get right to this, guys. Reservoir Dogs spoiler review. Uh, real quick, I just want to give a shout-out, man. Tim Roth, the way he acted in this movie, and I love how it opens, and it, every Quentin Tarantino, or at least from Pulp Fiction also, it opens with a dialogue. <laughs> it's at a restaurant, of course, and they're just talking, and I mean, Steve Buscemi, when he talks about, I don't believe in tipping. And they literally go on for like five minutes talking about not tipping waitresses, and then Harvey Kittle tells like, these waitresses work their ass off, and then all of them are like, yeah, they work their ass off, man. And it's just the way the dialogue is in the writing, it makes you laugh, because after seeing it, I saw it like two times the opening, I had to just get a sense of what they were saying again, and the Madonna and everything, it's about sucking dick, man. <laughs> this is the writing and the dialogue that Quentin Tarantino did for this movie is mind-blowing, man. But Tim Roth when it opens uh, after the credits and he's like she shot me man could have been shot and he's bleeding in the back the acting and, and even when he's a uh, um, again spoiler he's an undercover cop and he's like this movie came out in 1992 by the way when he's an undercover cop and he's like He's m doing a monologue and he's memorizing his lines. And then when he tells the story, I'm like, that's pure genius, man. Pure genius. Tim Roth steals the show. He steals, he is basically, I mean, all of them are main characters when you think about it, the f main four. But really, he is the main, he is the Reservoir Dog, man. He is the main guy in this movie. Uh, uh, the acting through every character. Harvey Cattell, masterful. Uh, Steve Buscemi, the way he just portrays his character, and he's really, he's, he's not really a tough guy when you think about it. He's more of just a paranoid type of guy who wants to get out of there, and he doesn't have the balls like Michael Madsen does. Michael Madsen's character is scary, creepy, 
well written and again like I said in the opening you know are you gonna bite little doggy or are you gonna bark little doggy are you gonna bite just that the, the dialogue that Quentin Tarantino wrote for the character is beautiful it, it's it's creepy strange and it fits the character well for Michael Madsen the torture scene you know stuck in the middle with you and the way that he dances and the cops all scared and he cuts off his ear you're never gonna forget that scene once you see that scene it's in your memory. It's in your memory and you can't get it out. So, I mean, just that itself is, it's awesome. Uh, that's all I'm going to say right there. It's awesome, the torture scene. Uh, it's really effed up. I love the ending because basically, most likely everyone died because either Steve Buscemi died or Mr. Pink escaped. But just the way it ended, you're like, Whew. that's it. That's not a happy ending at all. I mean, the ending literally is not a happy ending one bit, you know. It ends in gunfire and blood and tears, literally. So, put your gun down, put your gun down. Oh, man. Tell my cop. No, 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 no. Put the gun down. Just, oh, man. Awesome. Uh, like I said, Michael Madsen, dude, amazing. The, the directing in here, Quentin Tarantino, for a $1.2 million budget, the angles he does. And notice, most of his scenes last more than five minutes. So the camera is always resting, and then it just moves slightly, and then just moves again. So note that it, he always has the camera in a perfect, a perfect um, angle. Also, this movie is very funny. Uh, each character has its own sense of humor. Uh, definitely Mr. White does. And also, Mr. Orange really doesn't have that much of a sense of humor. It's more of um, Michael Madsen and all them. Uh, he has a more sick sense of humor. But uh, just the, 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 the comedy. I think Quentin Tarantino is really funny in comedy. And again, the opening scene is very iconic. The diner scene. Or not diner scene, but where they're in the restaurant and they're talking. And the waitress and everything. And... That whole dialogue there and Madonna and Dix and everything, so the opening scene will always be a memorable scene as well. The music in here, again, stuck in the middle with you, and they have a few other iconic songs in there, so I like how Quentin Tarantino, he just uses songs that are, like, probably he listened to when he was growing up, so that was really cool of that. Uh, the action in here, the way that it's filmed, this movie doesn't go in chronological order, it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and then... You know, that's basically the Tarantino way. So, the whole way of the the action, like Steve Buscemi's part when he's running away from the cops and everything, that was intense, dude. And the way the camera angle and it just drove around there, and when he crashed into the car, you're like, oh damn! And you still like, how how did he escape? Like it's still very questionable. And you you are the whole time, who's the snitch? And the whole twist when we found out that Tim Roth was an undercover cop, I was like. Oh, man, you know, he's like, you know who I am? Yeah, like, all that was just the twist and the, the action in here. Um, very bloody, like, Tim Roth was so bloody. I mean, it's really, there's a lot of gallons of blood in here. And um, the boom, boom, and the firing and the shots, I mean, it's, again, it's, it's like, it's not a happy ending. I'm just going to say that again. Um, the waitress, Tipsy, and I've already said that before, and all the characters, well written, well acted. It's just a very great movie overall, guys. I mean, there's nothing, uh, there's not that much wrong with it until we get to, like, like the story has a few problems. You don't see the heist. But that doesn't ruin the movie, because that's the way the movie was intended. You don't see the heist. That was basically Tarantino's way of making it different. So, I did put that as a con, but I'm not going to take points off for that. I'm just like, oh, I, I, I read an interview, and he was like, that's the way it was intended. And it wasn't like we didn't we didn't see the heist on purpose. It was, I mean, on, like, it was, a, he forgot it, you know, it was on purpose for that. Uh, also, the, that is a con, the Tarantino character, Mr. Brown. 
I, I get it. It's just a cameo, really, that he's in there. But the way he died, it was like he's bleeding, and then he's just like dead. Like, okay, really? Wow. I mean, he had a better cameo in Pulp Fiction. And also that one character, <laughs> the one character we never really see, the old guy with the mustache. Like, we never really see him <laughs> again. <laughs> okay. I guess he's not important, but... You know, they never really explain who he is, you know. But, uh, I just noticed this, by the way. On the DVD cover, Mr. Yellow, Mr. Pink, Mr. White, Mr. Uh, Mr. Orange. So, uh, Reservoir Dogs. I'm going to give this movie, guys, an A-, minus, a 9.10 out of a 10. Secondarily, a B and A.30 out of a 10. It's a great movie. It's, it's great. It's a movie worth owning, and this... If you haven't seen the movie, and I just spoiled it for you, well, I'm sorry. Go watch this movie. But if you've seen it, I hope you guys enjoyed the movie also. The acting, the directing, for a $1.2 billion, million, million dollar budget. Honestly, it doesn't even look like it was a million dollar budget. It looks like they could have done this with a few thousand dollars. And the warehouse and the warehouse scenes and everything, I think it looked pretty well done. I, I really do. I think it's a beautiful made movie uh, for a directorial debut also. So that that's a big deal, man. And then jumping to Pulp Fiction was eight million dollars. You kidding me? Tarantino did it right. I love the directing. I love the writing. I love the characters. The characters are interesting. They're funny, except the few characters that weren't really seen again and weren't really important. But the main characters, the acting, all that, the the set pieces, perfect. A minus overall, guys. Thanks for watching. Sorry, I was a little bit weird in this review and a little bit like jumping around there, but. I can't hold my excitement, and plus it's 2.40 in the morning, so let's get out of here, guys. Thanks so much for watching again, and uh, I'll see you for Pulp Fiction and many other more Tarantino movies and other classic and new movie reviews every week. Until next time, we'll spot me with you, always. How's it going, everyone? I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to also check out my other videos. I do TV show reviews, movie reviews. I do also game reviews and game unboxings, movie unboxings. I do a movie podcast, a superhero podcast, much, much more. So go ahead and check out the channel. Thanks for watching again. See you all next time.